Alrighty, we got another problem from chemical process. This time it's an egg sorting machine that is basically broken. And then we got this dude that's like, let me do it myself. So I want you to, as usual, try this problem by yourself. And this time you have to really visualize the system before you try some cookie cutter algorithm. Because that's just memorizing and we don't want to memorize. We want to understand how to use the fundamentals. So that you can apply it to later in life for your final or, you know, just maybe you can do your own mass balance on your own house or something like that. Okay, so pause it. All right. George Davis would want you to do it. And George Lopez would want you to do it as well. So. As soon as I uh, read like old Fred, I pictured some guy like this, and I think this is like the perfect representation. And so basically in one hand, in his right hand, he's labeling with an extra large stamp. He's trying to sort these eggs, and with his, uh, <clears throat> oh no, his right hand is doing the large, and his left hand is doing the extra large. My bad. So he's trying to like separate them, but he kind of, you know, messes up and breaks some of them. So he breaks thirty percent of the eggs that pass by him, and then the extra large ones, you know, there's seventy eggs per minute approximately, and twenty five of them are broken on average. You know. So you got to draw this process and really you're going to start with the box. If you want, you can put Fred right there in the middle of the box because he's, he's kind of like the new sorting machine. And the first part, <clears throat> it, it makes sense that 120 eggs pass per minute. So we can draw this as an input, right? So this is our input and we can write that this is 120 eggs passing per minute. And now what is he doing? This is a separations process again. So we're separating, right, between the extra large and the large, okay? From the extra large, hmm, look, 70 eggs per minute are coming through, but 25 of them are broken. See how we're translating the words into the more useful mass balance diagram? So this time, 45 eggs made it through, and 25 don't really make it through. And from the input, 30% of them are broken. So we can calculate from 120 eggs, and 70% have made it through. All right, keep this in mind. And finally, we can write a, uh, a variable for the large x, eggs that are large, All right? Great, great. So this is our mass balance, and now we can, sorry, this is our, our process diagram. We can, we can calculate the mass balance on the eggs, basically. So write and solve balances about the eggs order and total eggs and broken eggs. How many large eggs leave each plant? Leave the plan each minute and what fraction of them are broken okay so we're gonna do a mass but i mean egg balance okay so the overall egg balance is gonna be in equals out it's gonna be the eggs that are coming in plus the summation of whatever's going out which is really 120 eggs going in set that equal to 70 coming out plus this unknown variable and look we can easily solve for this unknown variable it's gonna be 50. all right great great all right, what's next? Well, we can do, hey, look, if we write a variable for the broken eggs, let's just call it X, <laughs> X or eggs. Oh, I should have called it like <laughs> eggs. X broken and call the broken egg balance. All right, all right. So what's broken here? 30% of 120, broken here, 25 and X. So we can write this 30% of the eggs coming in plus X times the 50 eggs per minute here, right? Plus the 25 that are broken here. And look, you can plug it in. And now it's algebra time. Solve for x, eggs. There's gonna be 22% of broken eggs in this large stream, okay? When I was doing this problem, I made a little mistake, which is pretty typical of what I do, and I don't want you to do it. Don't do some simple mistakes like confusing yourself, saying something like 36 minus 25, it's nine. It's just not, okay? Let's get a little bit of algebra here because I want you to do it yourself. All right? So, is he right-handed or left-handed? Well, if you read the question, the extra large eggs, remember, are in his left hand. Large eggs are in his right hand. So we're just going to assume that whatever is broken more, that's his non-dominant hand, okay? So here, 22% are broken, all right? And here, 
36% are broken, right? Because we got 25 out of 70. So if this one has more broken X, and this is his left, left hand, then he's probably right-handed because, uh, you know, he might be a little bit better at controlling his, you know, this is, this is even going into a little bit of, like, neuroscience and, like, psychology of, like, Oh, whatever, you're dominant, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, this is kind of an example of a, of a typical type of logic question that you might be asked in an interview, actually, um, where it's not really like a calculation of, of some engineering problem, namely some some logic-based type of question. I really want to make some more videos on, on these types of problems because, you know, yeah, we can, we can do mass balances all day, but these logic-based things that they come up on the day-to-day, I think that's pretty valuable. I love these types of questions. Even though it's a little weird, I love it. Okay, so keep these in mind. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, as usual. Uh, <clears throat> make sure to uh, like check out the playlist or check the description in case there's any corrections or leave a comment or any other like ideas you have. Please let me know. Have a good day.